Welcome to Talk to Tara. I'm Tara. Today my guest is Michio Kaku. We're going to be talking about subjects from his latest book called Physics of the Impossible, a scientific exploration into the world of phasers, force fields, teleportation, and time travel. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to travel through time? Or what if you could become invisible, or better yet, move things with your mind? Before Michio Kaku became a world-renowned theoretical physicist, he was just a curious child pondering these types of questions. Time travel, force fields, psychokinesis, and the like all have one thing in common. They have all been deemed physically impossible, at least for now. 100 years ago, the same was thought about lasers, televisions, and visiting outer space. Yet today, these are all commonplace. So what exactly can we expect to become possible 100 or even 1,000 years from now? Welcome to the show. It's definitely a pleasure to have you on today. Yeah, glad to be on. So this is fascinating. Force fields, lasers, time travel. Mm -hmm. This is part of your everyday work and what you do. That's right. When I was a child, I had two role models. First was Albert Einstein. I wanted to be like him and complete his dream of a theory of everything. But, you know, I used to all, always watch TV. I used to watch Flash Gordon. And I realized very young that I didn't have blonde hair. I didn't have the muscles. But I was fascinated by Dr. Zarkov, the scientist who made it all work. Without Dr. Zarkov, there was no Flash Gordon. He invented the Starship. He invented the ray guns. He invented all the fantastic devices on the program. So I said to myself, when I become a physicist like Einstein, I want to seriously look into science fiction, into the force fields and telepathy and starships, just like Dr. Zarkov. So this is something from a very young age you knew that you wanted to pursue. That's right. And you know, it's no accident that you are where you are today. That's right. And some of my physicist friends snicker a bit and they say, ha, I mean, these are impossible today. But I ask a different question. What about the possibilities a decade from now, 50, 100 years from now? What about 1,000 years from now? I'm a scientist. I'm a physicist. I can now answer these questions. You can now answer these questions. And these are some of the questions I would like to ask you. Going back to when you were a child and in high school, you had a project. You made an atom smasher. That's How did right. that help you get to where you are today? What was that? Well, I built an atom smasher in my mom's garage. I asked my mom permission to build a 2.3 million electron volt betatron particle accelerator. And she, she said, sure, why not, and take out the garbage. I built the atom smasher. It consumed six kilowatts of power. I drained the entire output of my mom's house. I plugged it in, blew out every <laughs> single circuit breaker. All the lights went out. And my poor mom would say, how come I have a son who plays basketball? Maybe if I buy him a baseball. And why can't he find a nice Japanese girlfriend? I mean, why does he have to build these machines? Well, these machines won the attention of Edward Teller, father of the hydrogen bomb. He immediately knew what I was doing. And he offered me a four-year scholarship to Harvard. And that began my scientific career. And who would have thunk from a high school project? You're continuing Einstein's research for the theory of everything. Mm -hmm. What is this theory of everything and why is it important? Well, we have E equals MC squared. That unifies M, which is matter, with E, light and energy. And that's the energy of the stars. That's why we have the sun. That's what lights up the universe. But Einstein was not content. He wanted to go farther. He wanted another equation that would unify the entire universe. The Big Bang, galaxies, black holes, protons, neutrons, everything into an equation one inch long. Well, he failed. But today we think we have it. Today we think we can, quote, read the mind of God. This was Einstein's ambition. We have today something called string theory that goes way beyond Einstein. And you are a co-founder of the string theory. Of string field theory, right? One of the main branches of string theory. And we think that this could be it. This theory could answer the question, can we bend time into a pretzel? What happened before creation? What happens at the center of a black hole? These questions can be answered now because we think we have a theory of everything. Do you believe in a God? Is this relevant to your work? Well, Einstein did not believe in a God of prayer. He said there are two kinds of God. One is the personal God, the God of intervention. But the other God is the God of harmony 
the God of beauty, elegance, simplicity. That's the God he believed in. And in my day job, I study string theory, and we think that could be it. The universe is simple, elegant, beautiful, and that could be God. Do you think that is maybe a fifth force that's yet to be discovered concretely? Well, we used to think that a fifth force might be ESP. Uh, for example, we have light, we have gravity, which keeps us on the floor, and we have the two nuclear forces. But is there a fifth force, like telepathy or ESP or seeing the future? Believe it or not, we physicists look at this very carefully. We do think that certain forms of telepathy are, in fact, possible. If you have a stroke victim, somebody who's paralyzed, can't talk to their parents or anybody like a vegetable, we can now put a chip in their brain, connect that chip to a laptop, and they can move the cursor and play video games. These people are paralyzed. They can write emails, answer emails, and surf the web. This is a form of telepathy today that we can use complements of computer technology and medicine. So it's maybe the limits of what we are aware of today, where how you like to uh, look at your work as you look into thousands of years or even millions of what may be possibilities. That's right. Certain things I call class one impossibilities are impossible today, but may be possible in a few decades, like 